All right, all right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar. Today is Tuesday, May 17th. Now, Mike Boutros with you on the horn. Good to see you in the room, Agnes, Aurelian, Steve, Ty. Uh, great to see you all. So, we've got some things to discuss. Finally, getting a little bit of that dollar exhaustion story we've been looking for. Uh, but before we jump into everything, guys, just want a quick announcement. I'm, I don't know if you guys have seen the homepage or not, but after eight years, We've officially decided to uh, shut down operations at the end of this month. So um, all accounts have been frozen. There's no more transactions on any of your cards and the logins will remain functioning to um, the end of the month and then everything will be there free for a month for you as well. Uh, you know, when I started this business with Jamie eight years ago, I was a single bachelor and here we are eight years later, married with two kids. <laughs> so uh, all of these uh, reports, all of these setups will be presented on daily effects guys so for you um i'm going to continue to try to run this service within daily effects they'll be uh building around this uh, content and near-term trading page which is going to have all different types of tools and indicators on there for you and i'll continue to keep these updates as often as i can obviously the weekly uh strategy webinar and daily effects on 8 30 on monday mornings i see you guys all in there those will still be a constant and later uh, in the summer, we'll be kicking off a second webinar as well. So I'm going to try to give you guys all the same great content, all the same great setups. Obviously, follow me on Twitter at MB4X and uh, Jamie on his Twitter handle as well. And I just want to thank you guys. It's been a phenomenal eight years. It's been really fun. Um, and we've had some great trades. So yeah, there will be one more webinar uh, on Thursday. Okay. And then we'll we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. The reports, we'll continue to put those out until the end of the month. Um, a second webinar, what's that? Totai on daily effects. There'll be a second webinar. Um, I think they're gonna announce that maybe later this summer. So keep your eyes peeled and I'll keep you guys updated on my Twitter handle. Okay, let's jump right in. We still got some major trades going on. So on the menu for today, we're gonna hit DXY, Euro, Aussie dollar. Someone in the room was asking about Kiwi dollar. I wanna throw that on there as well. Dollar CAD, NDX, Sterling, Aussie yen, SPX, and gold we got quite a list uh thanks for the eight years i really know i appreciate that so much uh it's been a humbling experience it's been really really fun so thank you uh dji is not on there we can add dji in there i got you ty and silver ty says i'm crying <laughs> don't be silly ty i'm not dying i'm still gonna be here brother i'm still gonna be trying to crank out uh all the trades that we're looking at here so stay tuned all right here's what dxy looked like into the start of the week. We've been talking about this trade for what, two weeks now? The focus has been on possible exhaustion uh, into the upside. The two levels that we've been focused on primarily over the last four weeks, I would say, was 103.82, the 2017 objective swing high, which held for two weeks. And then the high we registered last week was right into the 1999 swing high. That's 104.88, the high registered just above that, but closed below. We've been looking for the exhaustion trade, hasn't really materialized, right? We've had six weeks up, this would have been the seventh, and just really grinding into some major, major resistance pivots, really, really nice levels. So the focus has been to look for that exhaustion. The daily chart, well, it looked like it started again last week. Here's what it looked like right into the start of this week on the Sunday update. Uh, we ran right into that on Friday, pulled back, it was a reversal candle. Now, Sterling, um, we offered a outside reversal off the lows. And we, we highlighted that web in the webinar yesterday as well. And that was kind of one of the better tells. I know Jamie's looking at a position there as well on the swing side of things, keep your eyes on that. Uh, but it was well telegraphed, I think, there the most. So in any event, the first major support levels we're looking at here are gonna be at the objective monthly open 103.21, the low register today at 103.20, I'm sorry, 103.22. Okay, so one pip off, so that's the objective monthly open. Then just lower, you have the 2020 swing high. And that converges on slope, right? Former channel resistance, turn support, now support. So that's the level you wanna focus on. It's basically 103, right? 102.99, I mean, that's the break in my mind that if we got, would give us a more conviction that we have a larger correction at play. We don't know that yet. We don't know that yet. What we do know is that we've seen strong divergence into the highs. We've seen a break. You guys remember, uh, for those of you who've been with me long enough, I used to be really huge on momentum triggers. So here's a momentum trigger here. It hasn't broken off the low for the year, but if we take it 
just from the lows in March. Well, that's still a, a two point touch, but you get the picture. So momentum's rolling over, um, but we haven't broken the monthly opening range. We haven't broken the monthly rate monthly open objective and this is your sweet spot today the next few days here's what it looks like on the intraday so we just got the release of us retail sales guys coming in at 0.9 percent right in line with expectations we got an upward revision to the previous month to 1.4 percent so a um, little bit of a, a possible boost here but at the end of the day 103 is key support anything beyond 103 and you risk a deeper washout towards like 101.79, 101 101.80. It's the 618 pivot break in the origin of the breakout. So first things first, right now the focus on what kind of reaction we get on a stretch towards 103. Questions? There's not much any U.S. retail uh, or U.S. data rather of merit until the end of the week. So uh, keep that in mind. Okay, it's going to be broader market sentiment. And the, and the equity markets are on a nice rebound too. We'll look at those in a moment. Uh, I hope you will be doing some consulting. Ty, that's something that's always open on the table. So um, we keep you updated. All right, Euro. Here's what Euro looks like first on the weekly charts. And then here's what we look like now. So uh, the last update was on the 12th. Okay, the big support zone that we were talking about was right here into 10, uh, what was that? 103.50s, 103.85. I wanna show you the weekly chart first. The objective 2017 swing low, we missed it by a couple of pips here, right? Not really that clean on the on the weekly chart. Didn't have much slope down here. I told you guys that wasn't my favorite setup until we got into the dailies. And this is where things get interesting. So here's the basic setup, right? This is the same pitchfork we've been following all throughout last year's highs. Cap the highs for the year, again, on a closed basis. Can't make this stuff up. Right, we turned off of downtrend resistance. Here's the pivot below 25% parallel. That was another accelerated shot. Here's a drop into 103.40, 103.85, downtrend support. Divergence, yes. Not the strongest signal. Both reference points are below 30, but it's there. Okay, so into the start of the week, the whole idea was to look, see if we can build on Friday's reversal there the intraday chart is really what was cleanest and yesterday if you remember the first level i told you about if this is heading lower we would have wanted to see resistance at 105 we just plowed through 105 and we're pushing higher here so you're turning from downtrend support focuses on a possible exhaustion into downtrend resistance you have a basic two point trigger right there a two point trend line off the highs and then you have the median line it's so the same pitchfork we've been following right there so that gets you like 106 basically on the upside so remember how critical this spot of support was. Anything beyond 103.50, I don't really, again, I have a soft target at 126, but you're really looking at parity. This is a big, big zone, massive. Worth a little bit more upside, possibly. Obviously, if we continue to get a little bit more of a risk on uh, rally or a little bit of a reprieve like we had expected yesterday, could fuel some more upside here. And it's the dollar exhaustion story we've been looking for. So. Focus on what kind of reaction we get at 106. The breakout level, the reversal pattern would be 106.35. If we break above that, that's last week's high. Again, that's the 2020 low, objectively. Um, and that would take you through the median line. At that point, you would think, okay, we're looking for a larger recovery towards 107.80s and beyond. Okay. Questions on Europe? Ty's asking no webinar after, yeah. So this week, I'm gonna, we'll wrap up the last SB webinar this Thursday, and then it'll be just the morning webinar on Monday morning at 8.30 for a couple of weeks until uh, until DailyFX gets that page up and built. But I'll keep you updated, guys, on, on Twitter of all these things. And you'll be seeing a lot more content on DailyFX. So uh, it's a win-win for everyone. All right, that is Euro. Uh, next up on TAP, your email at SB still work? Do you have another email address? Ty, you can always email at the SB. Email address will be functioning for sure. You can always email me at michael.boutros at ig.com, which is the parent company of DailyFX. Um, so feel free. All right, Aussie dollar, last night's update. One of my favorite setups, someone was asking about um, Kiwi yesterday, and I think that was what the cleaner of the two, just because of where we turned. So here's Aussie. 
on the weekly chart, I didn't really like, like I told you yesterday, where we turned from. Daily chart has some levels that come out, but the focus has been on this 70 region, 7014 into seven into 6991. What is that? It's a whole litany of things. We talked about this for the last couple of months. Uh, the 2018 lows, pivot break in 2019. It was the 2020 objective yearly open, pivot break and swing low, last year's low, this year's opening range low. It's loaded, guys, okay? We close the weekly close below that. From a technical standpoint, that does keep you bearish. But yeah, Ty, that's the right email. You got it. Um, but could also be a false break scenario. The trade is so exhausted. We went in a straight shot to hell from the yearly high. What is this? So first things first, from a thousand feet up, watch the weekly close with respect to this level. If we close on Friday, and we'll look at this again on Thursday morning, if we close on Friday above this region, it very well might be an exhaustion sell-off, right? A false break type of scenario. So that remains to be seen on the near term. Here's what the daily chart looked like for Aussie. You know, we had the 2016 swing low. If we zoomed out far enough, okay, that's the objective swing low from 2016. I had this pitchfork, which is newly added here. Um, I don't know if I want to put too much emphasis on it, but near term, even channel support right there. And you saw the rebound. So right off the bat, initial resistance right now is at the mo monthly open. That's 7067. Okay. We need to see a break above that channel line. It's a three-point touch to give us the conviction reversal or to suggest that a more significant low is registered here. So again, kind of a wait and see approach. We haven't gotten a daily close above 70 yet. So today even, um, we're looking for a pivot. We're looking for a reaction. Today's close with respect to this region is going to matter. Okay. The trade was the rebound. The rebound level that we were focused on the most was 70, even on a near-term outlook. And I showed you guys this last night, two equal legs off the low gives you 100% extension right there. So even if this is just really near-term correction, that would have had to hold, suggesting that maybe we go look for a test of channel resistance. So um, I'm not in this anymore. Again, I scurried out near 70, uh, 20 even, didn't even, uh, not, excuse me, 702, didn't even get into that 703 level, thought I'd play it inside, but here we are. Nonetheless, um, on the way up, 7067, that channel, look for possible exhaustion. We'd need to get a pivot breakout here to clear that high, to clear that slope, to suggest that a more important low is in. Okay, you do have Australian employment data on tap tomorrow. We are expecting a print of 30,000. Unemployment's expected to drop to 39 from four. So could be a catalyst, keep an eye uh, on that tomorrow. But the objective here is to see what kind of reaction we get. First level has been taken out, what kind of reaction we get here into the upper parallel. Weekly open support is 69.27. If we get back below this, in my humble opinion, that would be the resumptive trade. Okay, then you're looking again for 68.30s and that drop towards the February highs, 50% retrace, that's like 67.50s and change. Uh, one other thing, just as a caveat here, this is a four hour chart. If we zoom in, in a little bit lower, I was looking at this this morning ahead of the webinar, you know, possible slope in play way too early to tell, but just to give us a little bit more of conviction, the median line, support, support, break, acceleration, lower resistance, breach, acceleration, higher brings in that may open and it brings in near term support today. Now into the U S open right into 69.90 at the median line. All right, so there's a setup here ready to go. If you're holding longs, your stop should be at 70 or below and your next level up should be 70.67. If you're looking for new positioning, again, it's the exhaustive trade that's of interest to us. Questions on Aussie dollar. Again, employment data on tap tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night here in New York. Ty says it's like a death in the family. Oh, come on, Ty. <laughs> um, all right, Aussie, uh, that's Aussie dollar, number three. Number four, I didn't have an update on it recently, I don't think. Kiwi, Kiwi, it's been a while since I updated you guys on Kiwi, but here's what Kiwi looks like. So the, the, the weekly chart was a little bit cleaner here. Um, the 618 retracement of the entire 2020 advance. He got the 2015 swing low, beautiful pivot zone. Again, on the back of this massive decline, love this. 
love this. Now, this was a little bit more of a conviction break in Kiwi of the yearly opening range, right? So it's a little bit of a different story because right now we're actually recovering above the yearly opening range. And again, it does suggest that non-confirmation low that we were talking about, suggesting that we may be in, at a near-term, excuse me, inflection range. So the Kiwi rebound, here's what it looks like on the daily chart. All right. Very similar scenario as, as Aussie in that it's in a very sharp, very acute declining channel formation, a little bit of a messy drop there into the 618. Here's the rebound, right? The first level was 64 through 47, uh, 63, excuse me, 47, a little dyslexic here. Um, we're pushing through that now. The big resistance zone and the more conviction zone here is right into that 618 extension. Just above it, 64, 65, you have the objective monthly open. Both of those converge on channel resistance over the next few days. So that's sort of your breakout zone for Kiwi dollar. Till then, we're just rebounding, same thing with Aussie, within the confines of the downtrend. Okay, a little bit of a cleaner move here. Start off the week with a slam lower. That was actually a beautiful opportunity for a, uh, an attempt against that low. Uh, I wasn't in this one, but here's 63.47, first level, second level in the bigger play, 2018 low, 64.24. Again, the weekly, uh, the monthly open right around that spot as well. All right, so looking for some inflection, possible exhaustion to 64.25. That's where we want to see a larger reaction in price. Yeah, weekly, yes. So support here is at the weekly open. Yep, that's your weekly open right there. You got it. Okay, so that is number four, Kiwi dollar. Number five, and my favorite of the lot uh, is dollar CAD. Man, what a beautiful trade. Guys, we're at support. So the idea for the dollar CAD short materialized early last week as this thing was pressing key resistance into 130, uh, 130.23 to be exact. It was this zone right here. And we started to highlight the risk for possible exhaustion. The first level down, we're testing that right now, is 128.14. That's last year's high week reversal close was resistance on the way up in march and february again the breakout in april near-term support just lower okay you have 2748 which is going to be the previous high week close for this year so the levels are pretty cool even on the longer term charts well how does it look on the near term even better let me get you right here okay here's what the daily chart looked like yesterday 38.2, a basic 38.2 of this is not just the April rally, but this is now a retracement for the 2022 range, right? Encom encompasses the entire yearly range. 128.19, just below it, you have slope support. We're testing that now. We're testing that now. Scalp chart looked like this. And again, you can always go to the previous update, guys, on the 9th to remember how we were looking for resistance as we were checking that. 38.2 retracement right here. We were looking for resistance into the upper parallel. Again, fast forward, upper parallel resistance held. Here's the pullback. Here's our key area of support. Two equal legs off the high. So one, two, three gives you the bottom end of that range. And the 38.2 gives you the top. Here's what it looks like now. 27.94 into 28.19. Within that range right now is uptrend support. Okay, so I'm looking for a reaction here today, now into the US Open. Questions on Looney. An inflection break below here, okay, would be pretty detrimental. You're looking 2676. Uh, this is a huge region, guys. The objective April high, before we broke out, the objective April opening range high. The objective 618 retracement of the yearly range. The objective 2022 yearly open. All fact. Nothing here is opinion. So that's a huge zone, 2640 and 2670, a 30 pip zone of critical inflection. Don't take my word for it. Here it is. And that's the risk if we break lower from here. Near term resistance right now is right back at 129. Just above 129, you have the objective weekly open. I didn't want to clutter up the chart here, but that's 29.17. So that's now your key sort of resistance zone um, moving forward. 
But right now, we're looking for inflection right here. Questions on dollar CAD. Dollar CAD is going to be subject to major event risk tomorrow with the core inflation read out of Canada expected to soften slightly year on year at 5.4%. That's still down from 5.5, but uh, a strong read nonetheless. The headline inflation gauge is supposed to be at 6.7. That is unchanged from last month. So with inflation all the talk of the town, keep an eye on that tomorrow. All right, that is dollar cad number six number uh, or that was number five number six here is uh, NDX go a little bit out of order here uh, because I did give you an update on this yesterday and nothing's changed obviously this hasn't opened yet but I just wanted to highlight where we are in trend so guys remember NDX on the weekly chart um, was coming to a big zone of support and we hit that last week with a really strong rebound remember it was 11,520 into 11,768 the 50% of the entire 2020 rally, the 100, two equal legs off the high. So we dropped into that and rebounded. We started off by saying, well, that's, you know, that's the exhaustive risk as far as the downtrend is concerned. Here's what NDX looks like on the daily chart, okay? Gapped higher into the open, stretched into near-term resistance, a major pivot that we've been watching, and we held there into the close. So here's the thing, this is where it gets tricky. If it goes down and tags the close from last week, and that holds 11,945, uh, 11, I'd still be looking for a rally towards the year, the monthly open, bigger recovery. Um, you know, you need that washout. It's been a pretty orderly decline. Wouldn't be surprised to see some bottom fishers here um, and a little bit of recovery, but it's all within the confines of the downtrend. We haven't actually attained two equal legs here off the high, like we did in SPX, right? SPX came right into that 100, even closed right below it, but what a rebound. NDX, maybe maybe playing a little laggard. So I'm still leaving the possibility open for a recovery towards the monthly open, but at the end of the day, you're basically looking for exhaustion on an upside, upside shot here, all right? So that's NDX. Again, no change to any of the levels on the intraday chart. A break lower from here, and you're risking 10,589, another, what's that, another 8% lower uh, if that breaks. So a big support zone, not surprised, maybe a little bit of more of a, of a reprieve here, but at the end of the day, you're coming off of downtrend support, looking for exhaustion into downtrend resistance. Okay, we'll come back to the other equities. I'm sorry to go out of order, but I just want to stay in line with uh, all the updates here so I can make sure I hit all these setups um last uh the previous this was into the sunday open i gave you guys an update on sterling and man sterling it's starting to get cleaner and cleaner uh the levels that we were talking about well let me take a step back on into the open of the week my focus with this report was you know we're at support these two levels we highlighted well documented as soon as we made these breaks all three of these levels were highlighted 121.66 122.50 and that's 618 we held that 618 for a week, ripped through it two weeks ago. Last week, we tested both of these levels and closed above both of them, okay? So when we did that, it just so happened that we had marked an outside reversal candle on the daily chart, and it was right here. We highlighted that into the Sunday open as well, right? Here's what the Sunday chart looked like. So right off the bat, you have an outside day reversal off fresh yearly lows off the May low week close from last year. Good area to look for a little bit of a rebound? Sure. Here's what the intraday chart looked like. Right? And here's what the intraday chart looks like now. So uh, it's too early. This is a slope I just added. I don't want you to focus on this right now, but here's what it looked like, right? Opened up the week, spiked higher, the pullback lower, couldn't even see a test of Friday's low. And then here was the break yesterday, but really tight opening range, stretching towards that 618 retracement. We're at resistance right now at 125, basically 2498. So if this formation is has merit, and again, it's way too early to tell, but what it highlights is some interesting levels. A, that 125 level now is the 25% parallel, maybe a little higher, but you're looking for near-term resistance. Um, and that initial spike higher into the Asia open, well, that's now in line with downtrend support. 
uh, excuse me, with uptrend support. So that would be your near-term bullish inbound. Really tight levels. This is just a preliminary. This is how we work the trade, guys, how we work the reversal pattern. A lot of people, I had a couple of guys asking in the webinar yesterday, well, Mike, how do we recognize uh, whether it's an exhaustion low or a turn? And it occurred to me after I left the webinar, one of the first things that you want to look for, guys, is a break of the trend. So if we're looking for an exhaustion low, the first thing you look for is a break of downtrend resistance. Well, here's one touch, two touch is speculative, third touch confirms, here's the breakout. All right, so we saw a little bit of a shift, cool. Then you want structure to the ascent, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to give structure to the ascent. If any pullbacks fail along that parallel, gives you more conviction. If the breakout here accelerates, gives you more conviction to use that slope. And again, it would highlight the levels of where we should be looking at, not only where, but when. So too early to, to put too much reliance on, but highlight some interesting levels we'll be looking at today. Near-term resistance in sterling, looking for reaction here. If we are heading higher, losses ideally, okay, something like this would hold the, the pullback. But seeing as how we're just turning from resistance or just turning from support, bullish in value needs to be down here. Okay, core inflation data out of the UK tomorrow as well. In fact, overnight, we got uh, employment data uh, out of uh, the UK showing a, a print of 83,000, way surpassing expectations and dropping unemployment to 3.7 from 3.8. So adding fuel to the sterling upside here, but even that rally now coming to the first major inflection zone, you'd want to see some sort of reaction here. That is British pound number seven. An interesting update that I didn't get involved in, but I wanted to throw it out there because it was a very risk sensitive pair. Typically, Aussie yen is going to be that risk sensitive pair just because of the disparity um, of the interest rates and the carry trade and all that. But at the end of the day, um, we were looking for possible exhaustion, right? The, the pullback off the high had rebounded right off a 236 retracement. And we were looking to see if this rebound has more oomph. More importantly, what kind of reaction, reaction we get that 38.2. If the median line breaks and you get a 38.2 break, you're looking for a rally towards the monthly open, right? A much more substantiated rally. Here's what Aussie N looks like first on the weekly charts. Again, it's not the cleanest chart here, but there's that 236 tap. Here's the recovery. And in fact, when I showed you guys this into the open, the focus was because we closed so far off that 236, we closed back above the 2017 high we closed, which is a very nice pivot. It was the kind of the conviction that, yeah, the downside spill looks a little exhausted. Here's what it looks like on the daily chart, okay? Downtrend support, here's a pitchfork off the high, low high. Downtrend, there's that 236. Here's what it looked like into the open, right? Ahead of the... Uh, the Asia Open yesterday. So here's today's breach through 90.53, that 38.2, just higher is going to be 91.66. That's your objective monthly open. Here's what it looks like on the intraday. Uh, here's the 240, and here's what it looked like again into the open of Asia. Okay, so you got a little bit of a slingshot into the open, which moved lower, but it held right at that parallel. Here's the breach. Okay, this keeps the focus on the May open, 9166, just higher is gonna be that former swing high, that down slope. So I'd look to clean things up here. Um, yeah, I mean, it worked out pretty well. Worked out pretty well. Looking for 9166 on this stretch. One other thing, again, not to get too granular in near-term price, but if this is just corrective, here's the 100. 92.28, uh, 91.28, excuse me. So watch this zone, watch this zone. Questions on Aussie yen? Kind of jives well, a little bit of a breather here in, uh, in the SPX, some of these risk markets, but I don't want to get too comfortable in these recoveries because I don't think they, ask, they last too long. Here's the SPX. So. SPX, one of the cleanest of the lot, has been you know, textbook since the breakdown of uptrend support back here a few weeks. We talked about 39.24. That was two equal legs off the high. That was downtrend support. We looked for reaction there last week, and we got it. Here's the recovery. 
How deep does the recovery get? How much upside does this have? Here's the daily chart. Monthly open 4140, the May 2021 low day close, which has been a very decent pivot in price, caught the lows there in February, caught the lows right here in May before breaking down. That zone is 4117 into 4140. That's what I'm looking for on this stretch right here. And the intraday chart, man, that's been so clean. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of how it looked into the start before Asia. A little bit of a pullback here yesterday, but here we are breaking through that basic 236 retracement, big zone of resistance, 4117, 4137. And doing a lot of work around you, around your work. Hey, Ty, uh, keep it up, brother. I'm still going to continue to provide a whole lot of research. Looking for exhaustion in the stock indices. Can I have the weekly get? Yeah, you can have the week for SPX. It's right here. Pretty big. I mean, if we were going to get any kind of recovery, this is where you'd want to see it. This is where you'd want to see it, um, both in time. Um, and in price. Let me just see what this looks like real quick. Hmm. Keep an eye on that 4170 level if this breaks out. Could be a head fake there to complete two equal legs. I wouldn't want to put it past this thing. So let's stretch the breakout zone to 4170. Um, you know, if that breaks out, you're looking for 4340 and basically downtrend resistance. That's going to be the real test. But right now, ideal scenario, or at least in my humble opinion, looking for topside exhaustion. I think you're right there, Ty. All right. So that's the SPX. I might as well just show you the Dow right now. Here's the Dow. Um, you know, it's a similar scenario in that I think you have some possible upside here, but I just don't like where we turned. I just don't like where we turned. I didn't have any major levels there. It didn't complete two equal legs yet. It hasn't broken, you know, the pivot break that shed the thing lower. So we're still at resistance. So it's the same setup. I'm just playing it the same way. Maybe a possible run into monthly open resistance. But that's all I would want to see here if we are heading lower. This is a pretty big break. A break of the yearly opening range, a break of the 618 extension, a break of a Fibonacci level from the 2020 lows, huge level. So if we give out here last ditch resistance, um, otherwise I kind of want to shelf this right now. Uh, again, ideal scenarios, you know, rainbows and, and unicorns. Uh, you can tell I have two daughters. Uh, it runs up to here into resistance and then um, and then it fails. But it's just not my favorite setup. You know what I mean? Here's the here's a four hour. Here's the two hour. Price action just hasn't been all that all that telling. And if you take a two, three, six, just for your just for your reference, if you take a retracement off the high, the fib ratio comes just higher above that may open. So the levels are kind of stacked up. I don't know. Not my favorite setup, Ty, but there it is for you. All right. Gold. So gold is doing one the same thing that um, that Aussie's doing. It's testing a break of such critical support. And if we recover this week and close back above 1828, 1818, it could very well be a pretty significant false break scenario and a major low, but that's way too early to tell. The one thing I want to bring up to your attention here is here's the 52-week moving average, yearly moving average. There's been a very decent pivot in price, as you can see, for the last few years. Uh, that's, you know, we closed below that yesterday. That's now resistance, right where we are right now, 1835. Long story short, watch the weekly close here. Watch the weekly close. This is very, very important uh, for gold. So. That's all I got to say here on the daily chart. There's a couple things to look at. So first of all, um, the 2020 low we closed 1791. Remember I told you that was the last ditch effort. Talk about last ditch effort, right? So that's your objective yearly range low. You know anything sub 1780s, and objectively, regardless of what you're looking at, that's a bearish signal, right? So here's the recovery. Yesterday wasn't an outside reversal candle, but it was a pretty sizable reversal candle that took us back into that key support zone. And again, here's the move higher. And this is the 200-day moving average, same level as the 52-week. So look for, you know, if this is a massive fake out, that could be it, and we move lower. But I'm thinking 
this may be a larger recovery. Here's the intraday chart we've been looking at, 240. Here's what it looked like on our last gold update. NDX, no change to any of those levels. DJI, no change to any of those levels. Here's what it looks like from the, the 12th, this from last week. So we were looking for support into this zone. We got it. We got the whole drive lower into that 2017 low we closed, but we rebounded. We're back above this. Now, I was toying with this earlier. I don't really like to get too liberal with kind of just playing with the slope to whatever lows I want, but I did want to show you if we adjust this to that previous swing low, was that a perfect tag of support? Could be the more dominant slope. Remember, again, this is what we were working with. Kind of overshoot there, decent median line play, but a little messy. Move it back to here. Okay, that's from the 16th drop. Catches the low, the 25% line gets better support, better support, better breakthrough. So it suggests that this should start to accelerate into the US Open. If it fails, when we get back below 1818, honestly, I think you possibly get this the resumptive move. But for me, it's all about the pivot in this zone. Okay, my favorite Fibonacci confluences, I tell you this all the time, 618 off the low, 100 off the high, uh, tend to be major pivots in price. So watch gold and how it closes the day. If we close and pivot back above that 25% parallel, I'm willing to work with this slope instead, which is a slight adjustment, right, from that low to the previous one. But uh, keep that in mind for gold. Coming some big support here. I don't see Iman in the room today, one of my biggest gold traders here, uh, but I'm sure she'll be watching the replay. Battle line's drawn. Battle line's drawn. So uh, a corollary, nine, number 10, here's silver tie. Um, also threatening a break of downtrend or down channel support. So let me clean this up a little bit. Here is the breakout or the breakdown of the uptrend off of uptrend or downtrend resistance. Here's the uptrend break. Gave us the, the move lower. Here's a basic high, low high. Okay. Here's a 25% parallel. Boom. If this is a breakout, okay, we got to re rework these levels. Stand by. Hmm. It's not the cleanest. It's not the cleanest tie, but let, let me let me take a zoom back for you first. This is why this is important. Uh, this was a break of the objective yearly range lows. You should be looking for resistance along the median line if this is heading lower. Now I told you guys yesterday. I think I told you this looks like a one two extended. You know, wave three is typically your of the Elliott wave. If, if those of you who follow Elliott, is typically the largest uh, largest uh, thrust. So. I'm thinking this is three, which would suggest look for exhaustion and then one more low. Now that's a very crude interpretation, Ty. Don't you know? Don't run with that, obviously. But like that's sort of how I'm looking at this from here. Uh, the near-term trade again looks like we just may be scratching an attempted break of downtrend resistance. If this doesn't hold and we move lower again, a break below the weekly open again would, in my mind, would be resumption. So like 21, 2108. If you break back below that, I think you, you look for that extended drop towards 19. But, um, you know, it's the same trade as, as gold. The breaks have tested some major support on the downside. We're looking for the close. We're looking to see how that closes today to validate that break. And we're looking for resumption. Or was this all one larger exhaustion and you look for a larger recovery in stocks, in euro, larger pullback in dollar. So they're all very similar setups, guys, heading into Tuesday trade. Um, so that's everything on my list. Uh, I made some good time today. I think I got everything off of your list as well, guys. SP, gold, silver, I got all that. Okay, so some ancillary things before I let you go. Bitcoin is gonna be the talk of the town. I'm still standing by what we talked about yesterday. I think this was a, a pretty significant bounce. The fact that it extended into the 618 and closed above it does suggest you have some room for sideways, maybe a test of the parallel. Um, I don't think the pain is necessarily done yet, but I do think this is going to track to track risk. Okay. Um, geez, I can't even remember who was. I was talking to a reporter yesterday um, who was calling and asking, 
is this the low in Bitcoin? And I was telling her, you know, this is one of the first assets, in my humble opinion, I've said this here before, I think it's going to get the biggest hit. So look for this to track risk. No surprise, we're seeing Bitcoin come off the lows as we talk about SPX coming off downtrend support. It's going to happen. It doesn't mean the low is in. It means we're coming off downtrend support. So we could rally towards downtrend resistance. Doesn't mean that, you know, we're back on track for a, a 50,000 clip. But the focus right now needs to be a break of 29,000, 32,000. That's all I'm looking at. Okay. The 2021 low day close. And then again, the 2021 open and the 618 of that rally. This is the zone that we need to focus for a breakout. Okay. On the stock side of things, a lot of people have been talking about Apple, a trade I've been following like a hawk. The break below 150 was uh, very significant. It dropped right into the 100% extension, the October 2021 low day close. You can't make this stuff up. Here's the rebound. Sure, we could get back into 150. Doesn't mean you're out of trouble. In fact, if you get into 150, there's the 2020 trend line, former support in that resistance. There's downtrend resistance at the median line. There's the yearly opening range lows. So even if we get into 151, 152, you're not out of the woods yet. So some of these trades that you know a lot of people are going fishing on, and I get it, I think that time is coming soon. I don't think we're necessarily there yet. Here's Amazon. What do I always tell you guys? A break of downtrend support typically can be one of the sharpest parts of the drop. Here it is. So even if this rally is back up into resistance, former support, even 2440, you're not out of the woods yet. Not out of the woods yet. Still got some room. So again, guys, just my humble opinion. Uh, and it kind of jives with what we're looking at in the SPX, in Dow, in, in a NASDAQ, possibility for a little bit of a bounce. Can you do Tesla? I can tie, but it doesn't make me very happy. I'm gonna show you my real chart. Here's my entry. I'm still long from 1,023. Now, again, this for me is a longer term uh, investment. It's not a trade. Um, I would be looking to get long again near 600 or add to that position, 593, 600. Again, that's the 100 off the high. My favorite fibs, 618 off the low from 2020. Beautiful zone. If we get down there, I, I think that's a, that's a fade opportunity. Um, I don't think you wanna try to catch the low here. Again, for me, this is not a trade tie. I've, I'm, I'm, this is longer term. All right. Similar scenarios in Microsoft, just huge, huge losses. I mean, I'd love, you know, for this to get even deeper. Here's uh, Disney. I think there's a whole host of reasons why this thing should wash out more, uh, but I won't get into the politics of it. But in any event, you know, this is maybe an opportunity up ahead. Bottom line is um, you want to stay nimble. It may, you know, we are getting to a point, I think we're near term, medium term. We may be making some lows that can offer a bit of a trade, but the broader risk remains. You have inflation running hot. You have a tightening Fed. You have QT starting next month. We haven't even started that yet. You have a looming uh, energy crisis, which is going to continue to put upward pressure on inflation um, and ultimately consumer costs. And then um, you have the, the, the deteriorating, or I guess I wouldn't, whatever the situation, you know, no one knows what's going to happen in Europe and we pray for that to be a, a, a peaceful resolution, but it still throws a, it still throws a wrench in the whole thing, right? So not surprised, we're still looking for a broader market correction, near term, the rebound possibility definitely is there. All right, so we will go ahead and wrap things up here. Uh, again, we'll be back on Thursday to wrap things up, guys, with our final uh, webinar here on SB Trade Desk. Again, I'm going to thank you next time as well, but I want to thank everyone in the room and all the uh, viewers for our uh, super loyal subscriber base that's been with us for eight years. It's been phenomenal. I want to thank you guys uh, again, and best of luck trading. I'll see you on Thursday morning. Watch those uh, reads that we have over the next couple of days, specifically core inflation from the UK and Canada. Um, as well as employment figures out of uh, Australia as we get into Thursday morning. We'll touch base there. Ty, we'll keep the communication open. Um, and you have my contact information, so I'm sure we'll go back and forth on that. Best of luck trading, guys. See you Thursday morning. Cheers.